Good morning, everybody. Hey guys, morning. Welcome to Devo's. Hey everyone. Hey Holly. Hey Karina. Hey Gaston. Hey Madeline. Good morning. Good morning. Hey Tiffany. Hey Glennis. Well, thanks. I put some earrings on and some lipstick. That always goes a long way. <laughs> Joyful. Yes. So much to be joyful about this morning. Hey guys, hey Anthony, hey Nicholas, hey Derek, hey everybody, welcome, welcome this morning. Chucking and Lansing, Anthony, you got this. Man, I'm so glad you are tuning in. That is amazing. Um, Kimberly, thanks, you like my hair. Okay, let, let me show you something, okay? This, this blonde piece, this is um, pre-quarantine hair. This brown hair, is quarantine hair. <laughs> Anybody else? You can kind of see how long we've been quarantining by our hair. Oh yeah, but hey, it's all good. The hair is the least of our worries right now. Am I right? <laughs> We're all in this together. Man, you just gotta laugh sometimes, right? Well, I found a skid steer down the street while I was doing my run this morning, and so I was like, Guys, there's a skid steer on our street. You should go check it out. So the boys are all checking out the skid steer. So I have limited time. So we need to dig in fast <laughs> while I have the house to myself. Okay, I'm drinking this um, green concoction that I drink every single morning. This is my smoothie. I make it for me and Chris, and then I make a slightly tastier one for the boys. So I am all in and ready to start the morning with you guys today. Cheers. Cheers, come on, give me a cheers, whatever your coffee, tea, water. Cheers, guys. All right, okay, so many of you guys are commenting that my hair is done and I have earrings on. I guess I need to up my game for you guys. I guess I, you know what? Hey, never mind. You know what? This is live, right? This is a live. So I can come to you as I am, but I appreciate the compliments. Y'all are making me feel really special today. And maybe I'll wear these earrings more. I've had these since I was like 18 and I thought maybe they weren't cool anymore, guys. But if you think that my earrings are still cool, then I'm just, maybe I'll keep wearing them. Okay. See, what you got to understand about me is that I am on a journey to try and care more about what Holy Spirit is saying to me, what he thinks of me, than what you guys do. I'm just going to be honest with you all right now. I am on a journey to caring more about being obedient than about applause. And I think we're all on a journey to understanding and realizing that, you know what, if we live for people pleasing and approval, and that's the center from which we make all, all of our decisions, then when we don't get that applause, or when we lose followers, or when we lose our job, or when we, whatever it is, fill in the blank for you, when you lose what you feel like gives you value, then it really affects your, your soul. And so I am on a personal journey right now of loving you guys, but trying to not care that much what you think of me. <laughs> How's that for a morning Devo? Um, that's really what I'm in the middle of right now. I just felt like you guys are my people. You're my people, okay? And I love you all so much. And I share my whole life with you guys, right? I don't really hold a lot back. So I just feel like I need to let you know that that is the journey I am currently on. Caring less about the voices out there, about your opinions about me, and more about making sure that I am leaning into what Holy Spirit is asking me to do and say. Because there's such a difference, right? Between approval and obedience. There's this difference in motivation. And I want to talk this morning about motivation. What is motivating you in your life right now? In all of your decision making, in your processing, in what you post, in what you don't post, on who you're friends with, on the good deeds and acts you're doing, is it all being done from a place of wanting approval and applause? Sort of performance driven to get that pat on the back so your ego feels good? Or is it being done from a place of obedience, 
an actual desire to have a heart like him, to reflect Jesus and the things that he cared about in his kingdom. Because these are such different motivations, right? Do you guys hear me? Hands up if this is connecting with you this morning. So for me personally, it's really interesting, right? Being in a band with Chris and we moved to America from Canada to do music as a band. And we started all of this to get on stage and to serve you guys through our songs and have you love us back through our songs. But in a season like this where the world is sort of feels a little bit upside down and everybody is throwing their opinions around and not always doing it in love, it really causes us to step back for a second and go, okay, what is my internal motivation? Am I aligned with Holy Spirit in my actions? In my doing? Is my doing doing coming out of my being? Or am I just doing this to look like I've got it all together, to look like I'm on the right side of history? Am I doing this to prove a point? Those things are okay if they're done out of a place of Holy Spirit illuminating a conviction within you and you going, now I need to share this because I really feel Holy Spirit prompting me to do it. This feels right. But there's such a difference, and only you know and only I know, if our motivations are in line with Holy Spirit, if our motivations are in line with kingdom living. And I feel like this is an important time for us to really make sure that we're taking our marching orders, so to speak, from our connection and our intimacy with the Father and what He illuminates for us and makes clear in Scripture. And within that, we can all have different opinions, we can all have different approaches, but the approach we all need to have is to make sure that our motivation is not to look good, to get approval and applause, and to have a lot of likes on our posts and a lot of likes from our friends and our family and our real worlds, but it's really to be in alignment and in step with the Father. And doing, even if it costs you something, because guys, it will. To stand up for what Jesus, I mean, it cost Jesus his life. It cost him his life to stand for the things the Father was asking him to stand up for. He even said, if there's another way, if I don't have, if I have to die, is there, is there another way we could do this? Have you ever asked God that? Is there just another way we could do this, you know, <laughs> that was easier on my ego? Is there another way we could do this that just is a little bit like, you know, halfway, that maybe we don't have to go all the way? Is there a way that maybe I could just like play it safe so that everyone could just still love me and not really know what I stand for? Guys, sometimes there is no other way than standing up and being who you are and being obedient to the things of Christ because that's what Jesus did and that's our example. There was no other way right? There was no other way. He needed to die for us. It cost him everything. And it's going to cost us a lot right now in this world to decide who we are and whose we are and let our being with the Father and communing with Holy Spirit inform our doing, our posting, our relationships, how we talk, how we love, our motivations. That has to be our motivation. It has to come from that centered place of God at the center and us living out from that place. It has to come from scripture and then us wrestling out our salvation and trying to figure out for ourselves as adults how it plays out in our life. Because here's the thing, guys, in a season like this where everyone has an opinion and everybody is sharing it, sometimes just scrolling through social media is just going to get you more and more and more confused. I'm not saying it's not good to be in tune. We need to be in the world, but not of the world. But we do need to be in the world. So don't take this as me saying that we all have a pass, especially if you're a Christ follower, to just press pause and check out. No, we need to lean in. We need to be in the world, but not of the world. So what does that mean? It means we have to know what's happening. We have to know the pulse. We have to know the wrestling and... The dysfunction and the function and all of those things, we have to be able to be strong enough through Christ to be in the world, 
But to not be of the world means we take a step back after we watch the news and after we go through our Instagram feeds and after we look on Facebook at everybody's opinions. And we step back and we go, okay, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? What's my part to play here? I want to do this from a place of my heart changing, not just getting a whole bunch of high fives on social media, right? Not just for playing. I don't want to just play it safe because I want you guys to keep liking me so much. It's hard, I'm not gonna lie. In an industry where I'm basically paid to be on stage and let you into my walk with the Lord and share everything about my journey and hopefully have you get some value out of what Chris and I offer, but my motivation cannot be your applause. It's awesome if it comes and it, what I do resonates with you, but it cannot be the purpose behind my steps and my actions. The purpose, the motivation behind me getting up on stage or behind me doing devotions or behind Worship Wednesday tonight cannot purely be to entertain you and to have you give me two thumbs up and say, I want to follow you. I love you. I'm going to buy your music. I'm going to buy your shirts. That cannot be the reason I do this. It cannot be. I got into music without a paycheck and I will keep doing it without one. My motivation has to be building his kingdom letting my heart look like his and be transformed. And as I am transformed inside, then my outside world has to look the same. So right now, guys, man, I am just trying to do my best. And I want to encourage you all to do your best to take your cues from scripture and from the Lord and do the hard work at looking at the racial inequality and issues that are happening right now and go, God, what do you have to say about this? I want to have an open mind and an open heart to understand the ways of your kingdom. I want to have the guts to stand for your glory, not mine. I want this to be for your glory and not mine. So that is the lens by which I am filtering life right now. The motivation for everything that I'm posting cannot be for approval and for applause, because you know what, right now, everyone has a different opinion about what I should be doing and saying, and everybody's letting me know. And that's okay, because you know what, when you have a public platform and I put stuff out on social media, you're allowed to agree or disagree with me. But my center cannot be rocked if I know that I am doing my best to be obedient to what the Father is asking me to do and say and share. And guys, to be completely honest, the more that I'm transformed from the inside out, the more that I have a repentant heart for things, especially with racism that I never saw before, the more that I become transformed to stand for the things that Jesus stood for, to love mercy, to seek justice and walk humbly with him, the more that my feed is probably going to change. And it's going to change to reflect the heart of Jesus in me. And so I guess I just, I want to ask for your kindness and your love and your grace as together we journey towards the heart of God through scripture, in our devos, in our music, in our worship Wednesdays, and all that we do, we want to be transformed from the inside out. I don't want to do anything from selfish motives or for likes or love of you guys, even though I do, believe me, I'm tempted every day. What can I post that would serve everybody the most and make everybody the most happy? Oh, I want to do that. I want to make everybody happy. I want to just give everyone those good feelings that God is for them and just talk about all the good things. I don't want to have to do the hard things. I just want to do the good things. You know what, guys? Sometimes we can't just be good. We have to be brave. Sometimes it's not enough for me just to be a good girl. I have to be a brave girl. I have to be courageous. I have to be strong. I have to know that my center is Jesus and that my motivation is his kingdom. And if that is the place I am working from, then I can handle it when anyone unfollows me or when anybody sends me hate mail at midnight and tells me that they used to follow me for their music, but now I've gotten too honest and too outspoken and too anti-racist so now you know I'm not gonna follow Jody anymore because it just got a little too real it's got a little too far I don't feel comfortable anymore so I'm just gonna you know just 
see ya. Your feed used to give me, I actually got a message from somebody that said, your feed used to give me joy and inspiration and now I don't have energy to follow you because I don't have energy for the stuff that you're posting. That's fair. And my temptation in that moment was to be like, well, <laughs> I've been serving and walking and giving and now you're just sending me hate. And it's like, no. Then I'm just being the same way. Everybody has to take the steps they need to take right now. I totally actually appreciate that. And if that means I'm following some people, that's what it means. And if it means piecing out of social media, then maybe that's what it means. I don't know what it means for you, but all of us need to evaluate our motives, what is spurring us on to do the life that we're living. And we need to evaluate the areas that maybe our motivation is selfish. Even the little things that we do right, but the good things we do, like bringing your neighbor muffins, bye babe, or whatever it is, you know, the little good deeds that we do, the, the money that we give, are we doing it to post about it? Are we doing it to look like a good Christian? Or are we really doing it from a place that's motivated by thy kingdom come, not my kingdom come? Is that really our motivation? Because you know what scripture tells us? That when we give ourselves applause and we tell everybody about the good things we did, that's our full reward. That's our full reward. Man, I don't want that to be my full reward because my father gives way better gifts and he has way more for me, right? Than me just, guys, I just did this thing and, you know, and all this, whatever. It's like, even in the name of like, maybe this will encourage someone. Only you know and only I know what's motivating the things that we do. And I'm, a I'm absolutely preaching to myself right now, okay? Just know, just know. I am absolutely preaching to myself right now. So scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 6, and I'm starting in verse 1. Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, in the message translation. Be especially careful when you are trying to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it. It might be good theater, good entertainment, but the God who made you won't be applauding. When you do something for someone else, don't call attention to yourself. You've seen the, you have seen them in action, I'm sure. The play actors, the, you know, look at me people, treating prayer and meeting in the street corners like a stage, acting compassionate as long as someone is watching. Woo-wee! Oh my, 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 my. Ho! Oh. Acting compassionate as long as someone is watching. Playing to the crowds. They get applause, sure, but that's all they get. When you help someone out, don't think about how it looks. Just do it. Just do it. Quietly, unobtrusively. This is the way your God, who conceived you in love, working behind the scenes, helps you out. Oh, wow, guys. I think we all need to sit with Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 to 4, and just let it work its way through our motivations. Let it work its way through the place that we are living from. Are we living to just be compassionate and caring and stand up for justice and mercy when people are watching? Are we just doing it to look good? Are we just doing it to go, look at me, I care I care about, you know, the, the injustice happening in the world. Look at my posts, look at my feed. You know what? That is the only reward we get are those likes on that post. The real reward comes when our motivation is standing for what this scripture says, doing justice, loving mercy, because that's what the kingdom is about. And that needs to be the place that we are motivated from. So let's just be wary and careful and evaluating our motives all the way through everything happening in the world right now and be able to take a step back today and let this scripture work its way through our motivations and the way that we're living. Because you know what happens? When we let go of caring about the applause and we just care about pleasing the Father's heart and having a heart that looks like him and cares for his kingdom, 
and we let go of all of the pressure and stress we've been feeling from hoping everybody can agree with us. It's time to grow up in the Lord and to care more about what He cares about than what other people think about us. It's hard. I'm having a hard time. I'm going to be honest with you. It's not fun losing so many followers, people that I've built relationship with through social media for a long time, but you know what's worse? Caring more about that than what I actually feel motivated to share because that's the Holy Spirit is asking me to share. Caring more about losing followers than obedience to following Him. I can't care more about you guys and your like or dislike of me than I care about following after Jesus and his heart and looking more like him. So that will always and forever be my motivation. And at times that I have not lived that way, I'm sorry, because you guys deserve that. I have to put what God's asking me to say out there. And I got to do it in love because I don't know better. I only know God and what he's asking me to do. And that's all I'm responsible with. I just want to encourage you guys this morning, based on Matthew 6, verses 1 to 4, be careful, guys, when you're trying to do good so that you don't make a performance out of it. May it be motivated by having a transformed heart internally and letting your external world reflect that. And when you're scrolling social media and getting confused and you don't even want to say anything because you're worried you're not going to say anything right, you know what? You can't really say anything wrong if you say it in love. If you say it from a place of, this is where I'm at, this is what I'm thinking through and dealing with, and I don't really know the answers yet, but I'm a work in progress, and I'm hungry to learn, and I'll love you all. Can you give me your help on, in your opinion? I'd love to talk about this. That is motivated by love and by a kingdom perspective, not by, this is what I think it is, this way or the highway, and da-da-da. So just let's be careful and let's also be careful to not play it safe because we want everyone to like us. Because you know what? Not everyone's ever going to like you. Not anyone, not everyone is ever going to like me. Not everyone's going to like my music. Not everyone's going to like my devotions. Not everybody's going to like my family, what we say and do and the way we do it and what we stand for. But you know what? I'm not trying to make you like me. I'm trying to inspire you to live a life that looks more like Jesus because I'm trying to do the same thing and just let you into it. That is my motivation. And so from that place, that's where my strength comes from. That is where I want my strength to come from. From standing firmly on following Jesus, standing up for the things that he stood up for, come what may. Come what may. So... When you do something for someone else, don't call attention to it. You've seen them in action, I'm sure, the play actors, treating prayer and meeting on the streets as a stage, acting compassionate as long as someone is, is watching. Playing to the crowds, getting the applause. But that's all that they get. When we do things that our ego needs approval on and we tell everybody about it, that's our full reward. Do it quietly and unobtrusively. That is the way your God, who conceived you in love, working behind the scenes, helps you out. He helps us out behind the scenes. Let his help from behind the scenes be your motivation in all that you do and say and post and live and interact in the ways you love today. Let that be your motivation. I love you guys so much. And uh, I hope that something I said really connected with your heart. Take what did and leave what didn't. And uh, I just trust that these are seeds planted and that Holy Spirit will multiply. God will multiply um, what you all need to hear. And the rest is out of my hands. And tonight is Worship Wednesday, so tonight will be special. It's always special on Wednesday night. Um, it's always something fresh. We never really just do the same thing. It's always a fresh set list, mainly curated by you guys and what you um, ask us to play. Because we are here, even though your applause isn't what motivates me, my love for you does. 
and being able to serve and love you guys just the way God serves and loves me is what motivates me. I love you guys a lot. A lot. And I love doing this with you. So it's going to get real, probably. It is already in these next couple weeks and months, and we're not always going to agree. But I ask you guys to have grace for me as I'm learning. I'll have grace for you. And let's have loving dialogue as the days continue. And tonight, come 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, um, we will be hanging out. And we're going to be playing whatever you want us to play. I already see Brenda, so you can find. So just let us know what you want to hear. And um, we would love to play that. So come hang out. Tell your friends. Have a watch party. And uh, come jam with us, as Ziggy likes to say. You want to come jam with us? You want to come jam with us, Mama? If him and, and Milo uh, and Ziggy and Chris are jamming in the playroom, he'll come find me in the house, which our house is not big. So it's not very hard to find me. But he'll be like, Mama, you want to come jam with us? It's like, how do you say, no, I don't want to, actually. <laughs> so I always end up jamming. Um, and I hope you end up jamming with us, too, tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun. So um, come hang, and it's going to be a great time of encouraging each other and building each other up, because that's what we want to do. Love you all, and uh, I will see you later tonight. Love you. Bye.